Hey my friends, what is good? Derek here from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites where we feast upon the words of Christ and we do one bite at a time. So I want to focus on an interesting word today for section 90. The word is oracle. Now I don't know what you generally think of when you think of the word oracle, but it's used in an interesting context here with section 90. If you go to verses 4 and 5, now verse 4 says, nevertheless, through you shall the oracles be given to another, yea, even unto the church. Again, you don't see that word very often in scripture. You find it twice here. Verse 5, and all they who receive the oracles of God, let them beware how they hold them, lest they are accounted as a light thing, and are brought under condemnation, and thereby stumble and fall when the storms descend, and the winds blow, and the rains descend and beat upon their house. If you were to go to footnote, the footnote actually, give, it says, see the topical guide, Mission of Prophets. And so we're referring to prophets here. In fact, if you want to get a little bit more specific, in the dictionary, the word oracle means a person regarded as an authority or a guide in a particular matter. So I want to show you, there's, there was a uh, message formerly known as Mormon Messages, an inspirational message, uh, about a gentleman who is a bishop who also happened to be a guide. And I call this guy kind of an oracle. So watch this video and we'll come back and talk about it. I, I love being in God's creation, and it really is a, almost a spiritual experience for me to be up there, and it really is exhilarating. Skiing is probably, for me, that's the closest thing I think I can come to, to finding out what the limits are that are still within bounds. I've been uh, patrolling now for 18 years. We begin our second service by I've um, been an LDS bishop now 22 months. Bishop Lauder is a really fun bishop. He he knows how to like connect with the youth. We've got three left over from when we did this before that we didn't have time to get to. He's not just my bishop, you know. He's a uh, he's more of a friend and someone that you can really get to trust, really get to know. It really is one of the greatest things to go out and do something they like to do, and uh, particularly Nelson who skis up there every Saturday. He comes up and finds me almost every week. We'll take one run together, and it's been a real nice bonding thing for us. There are many similarities to what a patrolman does each day they patrol and what a, what a bishop does on Sundays. For our patrolling, we start out every day with what the resort terms buffing out your area. And what that entails is first and foremost, setting up the boundaries, making sure the ropes that are put up the first of season are maintained on a daily basis. It's enticing to go to the back areas that are marked off because there's fresh snow that hasn't been skied in. There's nobody there, it's just by yourself and you wanna get that good, that good snow. The good snow is just beyond the boundary. If you don't, play in the safe areas, you get in trouble in those areas because there's, there's so many things that aren't really what they seem. The warning signs we post and the boundaries we set are sometimes ignored. But the problem is, underneath that fresh layer of snow in the out of bounds area, you have rock bands that might only be a few inches under there. You have tree stumps that have just barely been buried that could hook a ski underneath the snow that you'd have no um, idea that, that they're under there. Whenever somebody is injured and we get a call, either on the radio or on the phone, we involve the whole team, sending one person to first check the person out and then calling back to the rest of the team to bring whatever equipment is needed. It's so, okay if I uh, check this out here? A full assessment is done on the hill of what's the injury possibly and what equipment's needed to safely stabilize, pack, and transport. Let's have you come this way a little bit. You're a tall one. The comparison between the work we do in, in patrolling and what a bishop would do within his ward, particularly with the youth, is clearly establishing boundaries both senses and um, identifying those things they can do to prevent the injuries in the first place but once an injury has taken place help guiding them back and understanding that uh, there's always hope
If I make a mistake, then I'd have to go to my bishop. I feel he wouldn't, he wouldn't rail on me. He wouldn't get on my case. He would take it in a manner of calmness, and he'd just sit me down, and he'd be really understanding of what I have to say to him, and give me a sense of like forgiveness, I guess. And it's true that not many people get to have that relationship with their bishop that they get to ski with them. Nelson's a great skier. He is fearless about the terrain features. But also remember that because they're inbounds, they were built by people who use those features professionally, making those, those jumps and features so that they're the right angles, both on the takeoff and the landing, so they don't throw you in the back seat as you're taking off, and as you land, you aren't landing flat, but that you come down on an angle and it's a softer landing. And if you happen to fall, you slide rather than landing hard impact. Inbounds, like Nelson was going off the cool jumps and doing all these cool tricks and having a blast, and it looked like he was having such a fun time, but it was all inbounds and legal. In real life, when we're out there, uh, and we're enticed by things of the world, if we follow uh, what the world is doing, we're gonna find that we're in unprotected areas. If on the other hand, we stay within the guidelines that the brethren have given us in modern day revelation and through the scriptures, listen to the, the promptings of the Holy Ghost as we're taught to do, if we're doing those things on a daily basis, then we stay within the bounds and we find that we didn't miss out on anything and we had more freedom and more enjoyment by staying within the bounds the Lord has set, just like people do skiing when they stay in bounds, ski safely, but get to do some pretty incredible things. The offices of bishop and branch president and counselors are sacred in this church. The men who hold those offices are respected by the Lord inspired by his spirit and given the powers of discernment necessary to their office. Thank heaven for faithful and inspired bishops and branch presidents and their counselors. So I love that message because it shows you here is a bishop who also happens to be a ski instructor and he knows what he is doing. Uh, you know, it's interesting because we, I think we overcomplicate following the prophet. I, I really believe we do. And it is usually when the prophet says something that questions, that we start like, yeah, I don't know, maybe socially, maybe politically, where it's like, yeah, I don't know if he's a prophet. I, I love this quote. Sister Carol McConkie, who was in the uh, General Young Women's Presidency, spoke and she said this, according to the world standards, following the prophet may be unpopular, politically incorrect, or socially unacceptable. But following the prophet is always right. If I'm going to err, I am going to err on following the prophet. Why? Because he knows the way. I am okay with that. Trust the prophet. You trust these oracles. So we really need to, as the scripture says there, beware how we hold them, lest they are accounted as a light thing. Uh, and so follow the prophet. Follow the prophet. We're led today by a wonderful man, President Russell M. Nelson. I love him. I sustain him. And I am grateful for him. So, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing. Also, go check out our socks, our gospel-themed socks at bombsocks.com. You guys will love them. Godspeed. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.